Hey yo, welcome to Astronaut. If you're watching this, you've likely already seen some of the images taken by JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope, which were unveiled on July 12th. Today, we're gonna go over what you can see in some of these photos and diagrams. I feel like an astronaut in a what you know about rolling down in the deep. JWST's first images included the galaxy cluster SMAACS 0723, the nebula NGC 3132, aka the Southern Ring Nebula, the large, hot planet WASP-96b, the galaxy group Stefan's Quintet, and a star-forming region within the Carina Nebula. There are many variations of the images used to describe these objects, which you can access in the description section of this video under Resources. Why do we care about each of these objects? The deep infrared image of SMACS0723 highlights the depth of sky revealed from JWST in comparison to other space telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope which captured this same galaxy cluster with the Wide Field Camera 3. This image was taken on JWST's near-infrared camera, aka NearCam, and is a composite image of several photos taken at different wavelengths over a period of 12.5 hours. SMACS 0723 is shrouded by dust. Observing the galactic cluster in the near-infrared regime allows us to see through the dust, which helps us not only observe these distant galaxies, but also determine key characteristics, such as the age of these galaxies. JWST's mid-infrared instrument, aka MIRI, capture the image on the left, which covers a wavelength of 4.9 to 28.8 micrometers. This image allows us to see where the dust obscuring some of the galaxies resides. Why does this matter? Well, dust alters the apparent color of galaxies, which in turn helps us understand the distance to a galaxy. So understanding the quantity of dust around a galaxy helps us understand its true distance and gather additional insight regarding the formation of these galaxies. You can see more than just galaxies in these images. Wherever you see diffraction spikes, you're viewing a star, like this one in the center. Most of the other visible objects are galaxies. You'll notice that many of the galaxies near the center are arched. That's because the light from these galaxies is being bent on its pathway to us, an effect called gravitational lensing. Next up, the Southern Ring Nebula. We can, of course, see a crisp view of this nebula, but we can also see galaxies in the background, through and around the nebula. The gas and dust come from a white dwarf, best seen in the Miri image on the left. As the star was transitioning into its white dwarf phase, it shed off layers of material. Each layer reveals an epoch of the former star's lifespan. The layers of gas and dust that are farther away from the source are from earlier periods of time. Notice that the ring isn't quite circular. That's largely because of the bright blue star in the center. This star forms a binary pair with the source of the nebula. It is younger than its companion, but still ejects material as it orbits its binary companion, disrupting the nebulous form. JWST also helps us gather information about distant planets. WASP-96b is the name of an exoplanet slightly larger than Jupiter that orbits the star WASP-96. It was detected via transit, which we can see from this light curve. Basically, Webb observed the parent star for over six hours, which is shown by the range and time on the x-axis. Around 2.30 a.m., the gassy giant began to pass in front of the star. As it went in front of WASP-96, the planet blocked off some of the light coming from the star, causing the dip in the light curve we see here. The planet's transit, that is, the time the planet remained in front of the star, lasted for almost 2.5 hours. WASP-96b's transmission spectrum informs us of the planet's atmospheric composition, i.e. the elements that make up a planet. This is done by observing which wavelengths are absorbed by the planet's atmosphere. A detailed analysis of this planet spectrum is still being conducted, but the peaks, which are labeled along the graph, indicate the presence of water vapor. The image released of Stefan's Quintet is interesting in that it is a composite image from both NearCam and MIRI. Because it takes up a large angular area in the sky, the image was pieced together like a mosaic of over 1,000 smaller images. Altogether, it's over 150 million pixels. Compared to the image of Stefan's Quintet, assembled from MIRI alone, the composite image reveals far more distant galaxies. Four of the five galaxies that make up the Quintet, NGC 7317, NGC 7318A, NGC 7318B, and NGC 7319 are in close proximity to each other by astronomical standards, that is, 290 million light years away. The leftmost galaxy, NGC 7320, is 250 million light years closer to Earth than the others. This region is important to document because it allows us to investigate how galaxies interact with one another, including how star formation is stimulated and dust is distributed. 
Last but not least, let's talk about the Cosmic Cliffs, which refers to the star-forming region NGC 3324 within the Carina Nebula. This particular image comes from NIRCAM. NIRCAM's incredible resolution reveals nebula peaks that are approximately seven light years high and stars that have previously been unseen. Young, massive stars shape this nebula by exuding stellar winds and ultraviolet radiation. Images like this will allow us to address key questions regarding the process of star formation, such as why stars become stable at certain masses and how many stars form in particular environments. If you're interested in seeing some other views of these objects, I'd recommend checking out the Aladdin Sky Atlas. I'll add a link in the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, ponder, wander, and go right in the stars. It's no